In our world today, our future is portrayed as hyper-technological. Technology seems to be replacing human labor, human connection, and even human thinking. It's easy to see this in society and assume that we are moving in this direction out of necessity. For some, it's our destiny. It's an inevitability. In truth, it's an obsession. It's a religion. You see, in some circles, technology seems to be taken to the point that artificial intelligence is a representation of God himself. That through machines, through artificial intelligence, we can communicate with other beings and hidden worlds. That it's machines that break the veil between our world and others. Practices that were once reserved for oak groves, stone circles, and salt rings are now working through man's creation, through synthetic forces. Magic is now in the machine, and there's no going back. In this episode, we are going to pull back the veil and look at the techno-religion that is forming in our world. And we are going to do this through exploring the occult secrets of Mars. We are going to be leaving the physical planet of Mars behind for this chapter a little bit so that we can get to understand the esoteric meaning of Mars or the occult meaning of Mars. If we want to understand occult groups or secret orders, we have to understand the esoteric and occult meaning of the planetary spheres. The reason being is because our soul actually passes through these spheres upon death and rebirth. And this creates a very big effect on our consciousness, life after life on Earth. It's also good to keep in mind that although we do see a lot of technology being used in the occult now, even though we're seeing that, it doesn't negate that even occult technologies or even the spiritual use of technologies or using technologies to summon things or what what have you, even in those cases, they're still using the same cosmology that has always existed within the mystery schools. So they're still using occult science or mystery science. They're still using the, using the planets in a certain way. They're still using the elements in a specific way. The only different thing is, is that they're now just incorporating technology in the dark occult. So just because something seems more innovative, it doesn't mean that they're not using traditional methods. So what does this Mars energy represent? What does the planet Mars represent esoterically? So Mars is obviously representing the masculine forces in the cosmos. And this is why the symbol of male is the Martian symbol. And of course, Venus represents feminine forces. And that represents the female symbol as well. So there's no, <laughs> there's a reason why it is portrayed that way in astrology and in the occult. Um, and in 
spiritual teachings, Mars has a very specific effect on consciousness. It is a usually an activating force. It is forward motion. It is even upward motion. So upward motion, forward motion, the upward direction, the forward direction. Um, and this is why usually you'll see Mars represented as the obelisk, the upward arrow or upward triangle, and also the phallus. In the Mystical Hymns of Orpheus by Thomas Taylor, Taylor describes Mars in a similar fashion, stating that Mars is the differentiating, individuating, and materializing force for the Earth. He states that Mars is the source of division, motion, separating the contrarieties of the universe, which he also repeatedly excites and immutably preserves. He immutably preserves these in order that the world may be perfect and filled with forms of every kind. In Theosophy, Mars is also revealed to be an individuating force, stating that Mars relates to the centrifugal state wherein the soul becomes a more individuated center of force. So here we understand that Mars forces are responsible for differentiating different impulses from the whole. These impulses can then materialize in various material forms and thus have the opportunity to exist as an individualized aspect of the Godhead. Of course, like any cosmic force, it can manifest in a balanced way or an imbalanced way. For example, the Mars forces within an individual can lead to a powerful sense of individuality and even leadership, as we see in the Ram or Aries character traits. However, this impulse can also become imbalanced in the world and in the individual, causing self-centeredness and also an intense desire to think too materialistically. When someone is trapped in the inverted or lower Mars impulse, the individual or the self can become the most important thing at the expense of the collective, and people who personally align with this impulse can become too egotistical or too self-centered. Thus, the lower inverted forces of Mars are considered destructive because they can lead society into a selfish and materialistic existence. Those possessed by this influence will be a destructive force in the world. If these forces possess humanity for too long, they can lead to the regression of consciousness. Rudolf Steiner provides even more details on humanity's relationship with the Red Planet when he describes Mars's parallel phases of evolution with our own planet. In his lecture, The Mission of Christian Rosencruz, he reveals that it was the Mars forces that led to the extreme scientific materialist impulse that struck humanity around the end of the Middle Ages. He says that, Previously, Mars had sent forth good forces, but now Mars sent forth more and more forces that would have led men deeper and deeper into Maya, or into material illusion. The achievements that were inspired by Mars at that time were ingenious and clever, but they were Maya all the same. So Mars, at that time, at the end of the Middle Ages, sunk so low that its influence on humanity was that many individuals passing through Mars before their incarnation on Earth came into the Earth plane with an extremely materialistic ideology. This materialist Martian ideology then began to spread around the Earth, creating a subculture of intense materialism. It should be noted here that in occult science, our solar system is seen as a school. 
After death, our soul takes on experiences in other planetary spheres of our solar system. In the Edgar Cayce work, these are called planetary sojourns. The same teaching can also be found in Rudolf Steiner's Anthroposophy and, of course, in ancient Eastern Esoterica. All planetary bodies in our solar system function in relation to one another and represent the overall life expression of our fixed star, the Sun. Over time, after various experiences in other spheres, our soul essence moves towards incarnating on the Earth again. The Earth at this time is the most dense material planet. As each planetary sphere is evolving in its own right, it also has a fundamental relationship with the Earth, and these fundamental relationships cause different phases of life or consciousness for humanity. For example, Mars has been in a regressive condition in relation to the Earth. As Steiner mentioned, souls were passing through the Mars sphere before their earthly incarnation, and many of them were taking on backwards, destructive impulses. Thus, in their earthly lives, they were becoming too materialist in their perception and losing sight of the spiritual worlds. They were losing sight of their the higher worlds or the spiritual essence within themselves. Due to Mars's imbalanced and dark condition, an evolutionary impulse was introduced. The evolutionary impulse allowed Mars and the souls that would pass through Mars the opportunity to overcome and integrate the malefic forces. However, even though this transcending evolutionary impulse was introduced to Mars, it did not completely delete the previous hypermaterialist impulse. It simply gave souls passing through Mars upon their next incarnation on Earth an opportunity to align with the higher aspect that was now available to them. This means that each soul would have to overcome within their own being the darker Martian impulse. And this is part of the initiation in our solar system school. If they could do that, if they could overcome the regressive Mars aspect in their own being, they would take from Mars the highest it has to offer. Thus, some souls passing through Mars before their earthly incarnation are taking on the regressive Mars impulse, while others are not. Now, why am I explaining these occult secrets about Mars? Well, because understanding this dynamic reveals that some souls on Earth represent Mars in the regressive condition, while others represent Mars's higher evolution. Essentially, there are two streams of consciousness related to Mars that are occupying our planet one regressive and one progressive. One's relationship to Mars will determine the quality of their consciousness and what they are able to perceive. Specifically, those who have not passed the initiation on Mars will be drawn into materialist ideologies and find it increasingly difficult to connect to spiritual worlds in this condition, one may become increasingly imbalanced and possessed by the darker aspects of the planet. If an individual can balance these energies, they will pass into a higher level of spiritual initiation in the cosmos. Now that we understand that there is an imbalanced and regressive stream of Mars, or Martian stream, what exactly does that look like? How would that manifest in our world and how would that manifest as an individual? 
So that Martian impulse, that regressive Martian impulse is going to draw the individual and potentially even the world, if there are collective groups like this, into in, an intense materialist ideology. They're gonna move towards scientism or, or dogmatic science. Um, and their mind is always going to be, even if it is thinking in a spiritual way or wanting to perceive spirit or, or knows that spirit exists or that higher worlds exist, it's always grabbing the most obvious or literal interpretation of it. So the whole consciousness of the individual has a very hard time sh shifting into higher gears where the spiritual realms can actually be interacted with or understood. There are certain faculties that are not being developed when the mind functions in this way. So with this intense materialist ideology, science can actually be become a religion and the individual can begin looking into the material world uh, for every single spiritual affirmation or every si single thing about the spirit. And ironically and strangely, the spiritual world disappears as the scientific materialist or someone who is possessed with this Martian impulse is drawing so much on the material world, looking in the wrong direction, when they should be uh, attuning themselves to actually perceive the spiritual planes. And because this doesn't work very well, and because no matter how much you distance yourself from the spiritual planes and your own spirit, you cannot get rid of the desire to uh, have spiritual experience and to feel interconnected with other people and with the world and with the cosmos. You cannot delete that impulse and desire because it is so deeply a part of who we all are at our very basis. So instead, they seek to create machines and to try to use technology as a way to connect with these planes. Now, this is because, again, their consciousness is so degraded and materialized that they cannot connect to spiritual planes naturally anymore. They have not developed those faculties, but there is still this intense desire to have that connection. So they begin to create technologies and begin to put their focus on trying to use technologies in a ceremonial way. And of course, the other aspect of Mars can be intense egoism in a very negative way, intense selfishness. So that's a very bad combination because there may not be that humility and humbleness that's actually that that's actually needed in order to enter spiritual uh, planes and and have your spirit on fire inside of you. You do need that humbleness towards God and towards Christ. Christ God, you need that in you in order to receive it, right? So this is a very toxic combination of qualities that Mars can stream into us if we're not at a stage of overcoming that impulse or transforming that impulse into its higher nature. Another thing that can happen with the Mars impulse that we can see in our society today is hyperfuturism. So when Mars becomes heightened and imbalanced and inverted, it will push society and try to push the individual to a hyper-futuristic society. So it's sort of like the, the emotional side of things, the spiritual side of things, and of course the feminine side of things is pushed aside and it's made to seem weak. And it's all about technological advancement and advancing at any cost. And even, of course, with Mars being associated with conflict and, and might is right and battles, it's inevitable to become super hyper futuristic because in, in, their enemy will create this technology and they have to beat their enemy. So you kind of get down this intense Martian impulse of might is right and battles and it ends up leading humanity into a stage of futurism and hyper-technological society where when humanity actually isn't spiritually ready for that. They're not emotionally ready for that. There's a whole part of development that has not taken place because this 
Martian impulse has entered humanity and entered society in such an intense way that it's pushing the technological advancement of humanity um, to a point where um, it can lead to destruction. You know, so this is the danger of that Mars impulse is is hyper futurism, which isn't even really an advanced future. It's actually a completely degenerate future because it's not rooted in balance. It's rooted in the masculine impulse being inverted and turned up way too high in various individuals and groups on the planet. This, of course, leads to transhumanism. OK, so eventually what ends up happening is they spiritualize technology to the point where they eventually have to merge with technology. So the issue is, is that they create these religions around technology. They use technology for spirit communication, for predictions, um, even potentially to mind upload or merge or, you know, merge parts of themselves with or absorb people with. And then eventually the spirit, all spirituality and all of that essence has been channeled into machines and they're just totally empty. They've invested so much in this external technology that eventually there's no choice but to merge with it. And this is why you see this intense push towards transhumanism is that eventually when you invest so much into a machine, you eventually have to merge with that machine. If the machine becomes the, the, the thing that communicates with spirit and thins the veil and communicates with other planes, like with particle acceleration and all these different things, and eventually you've got to merge with the machine you know, because they're not learning how to do these processes from within their own being, right? They're trying to do all of these psychic processes and develop all these traditional cities or psychic powers outside of themselves through machines. So they have no, no other future but to merge with machines. And this is very sick because this also begins to change the form of humanity into something that is no longer human. Right. So this is not a healthy um, this is not a healthy way to be. So inch away from the device. Um, and this is sort of what it looks like. So. Yeah. <laughs> this is our little device. Uh, it is, that, that thing at the bottom is just to hold the threads in place because they're just like little fine wire, wires. Um, I mean, fr frankly, to, to sort of simplify this, uh, what, what we're, <laughs> I mean, it's more complicated than this, but it's, in a lot of ways, it's kind of like a Fitbit in your skull with tiny wires. So this is our surgical robot. And we actually ultimately want this robot to do uh, essentially the entire surgery, uh, so in, in everything from, from in, incision, uh, removing the, the skull, inserting the electrodes, placing the device, um, and then um, closing things up and having you ready to, to leave. So we want to have a fully automated system. So this, this shows you um, at sort of a close-up view, uh, which I think is actually not too gruesome. And it, it, it goes to say as well, that the transhumanist society and, and the society that is crafted around these groups of individuals that are essentially possessed by the regressive Mars impulse, you know, this is a society without heart. There is no heart. There is no compassion. There is none of that. It is just might is right. And if I can dominate you, then that then, then you deserve whatever that you get. So um, we have to understand what this impulse is so that we can deal with it correctly. So the next thing that happens when the Martian impulse becomes too regressed and intense in society, obviously, is that it tries to destroy the feminine impulse. It tries to destroy women and dominate women and control anything that has to do with a feminine impulse on the earth. And this is because in, in you know, occult science, each polarity is balanced and humbled by the other. This is just how it is. 
And, you know, it is the feminine principle that is the balancing principle for the masculine. And not even in the sense of an external thing, it's within us, you know, so um, it's also the other way around in that it's the feminine, it's, it's the masculine impulse that clarifies the feminine. So the feminine impulse can be become too emotional, too sensitive, too interconnected with everything and everyone to be reasonable. And it is the masculine impulse within the individual that brings clarity to that, that allows them to have a healthy separation and boundaries and an individuality, okay? And just like with the masculine impulse, it is the feminine impulse that goes into the masculine essence, essence and says, you know, you need to be more compassionate. You need to be more, um, you need to think of others. And so they really work together in this holy way. It's love and wisdom. It is uh, the, the mother, the father, the male and the female. It is these polarities that are so, so, so important in our society, within ourselves that we understand and use properly. And so it's actually a very um, important part of dark agendas to mix up these polarities, um, and to not have them be able to be understood properly so that we can seek a balance in ourselves and ultimately within the world to evolve properly. So the issue with the Mars impulse, the regressive Mars impulse that exists within many groups, many powerful groups in the world is that they refuse to uh, balance themselves out they're obsessed and they're possessed by this lower impulse and within their mindset to you know look and become balanced because when the when the feminine comes forward you know it asks you to look at yourself just like when the masculine comes forward if, if the feminine's in balance it asks you to look at yourself you know the other polarity humbles the the its partner and it realigns them. And this can be very painful if you are, you know, not wanting to do that. It's not an easy process to integrate polarities, clearly. You know, it's not easy to have to, you know, listen to the other side, right? It's much easier to just try to prove it wrong and dominate it and get rid of it. And so this is actually what we're going to see more of in our society because of this regressive Mars impulse is we're going to see this impulse to dominate and destroy the feminine principle in society in, in, in on earth. And this is not a new impulse for the planet. It's something that we've always had to sort of keep at bay. And because I know that there's people that are very sensitive to the imbalanced feminine, which also does exist, I'll also add here that there were times on the planet where it was the opposite, where the earth was ruled more so by Venus and streams from Venus and the feminine did try to also keep the male at an infantile level and keep everything at a very infantile level so that she could dominate. So this is not a matter of you know, going back and forth here on which polarity is worse when it's imbalanced. The reality is, is that our epoch is more ruled by Mars at this time. And there will be serious efforts to uh, get rid of women and to uh, actually use science and use technology to take the role of women away in society. Um, and we can see this very clearly already happening. So men will try to replace women. We were going to see a real push within the cultures and, and parts of society that are possessed by this Martian impulse to actually get rid of the woman and have uh, you know, false wounds. And when that Martian impulse becomes really, really bad, it's essentially playing God. So what ends up happening is they think that they are God, that they're everything. And because they have this hyper futuristic scientific way of being, um, they will actually just dominate the feminine entirely and begin to think that they can just create designer babies. 
that they can just use genetic modification to create forms and people better than God can. And that holy process that exists with inside the woman, with inside the womb, the woman's ability to um, bring perfect life in this world is is will be no longer respected potentially. And um, there's going to be a huge push to do um, genetic splicing and to have uh, artificial wombs. And this is actually removing the feminine principle from society. So be very careful with this because they're going to say that it's going to liberate women, that it's going to be better for women. There are certain things happening on the planet today that are also going to increase infertility. And this will also uh, make it seem like having artificial wombs is better for women. But make no mistake, this is an attempt to remove the woman from society, to remove the feminine from the earth. And this is what happens when the masculine uh, Martian regressive impulse becomes out of control and there isn't any counterbalance for it. They don't want to be humbled and integrate their feminine. They want to dominate it and destroy it. That's how this works. And I want to be clear also that this exists within the new age and within spirituality with the alien God myth with the Mars origin story, with the Anunnaki myth. Everything that we've covered in season one is the regress the regressive Mars impulse. You know, this idea that you can just hybridize humanity, that you as an individual can create a better creation than God through a woman, through the womb. It is it is removing the womb from creation. If you just take a bunch of genetics from animals and from like a person, you're saying that you can create life better than God can. And it is a completely backwards and divergent way. It's not even creation, it's actually destruction. We are having destruction being pitched to us as, it is cre as though it is creation. Hybridization is not a creative force. Genetic manipulation, genetic modification is not a creative force. It is the masculine essence that is trying to get rid of the feminine because it is the feminine and part of the feminine mysteries, the great feminine mysteries that have been almost gone today. That is the secrets of conception, the secrets of birthing, the secrets of creating little human beings the secrets of pulling a soul into your womb, the secrets of conception, the secrets of creation are the woman's. They are the feminine's. They don't belong to science. So we need to bring science way back in check because it's in a very precarious position today. I mean, look at it. If you look out into the new age, if you look out into spirituality, the number one origin myth for mankind is that we were created through hybridization and through genetic splicing. That is the Mars origin myth. That is the regressive Martian impulse removing the role of the feminine in creation. And that is why planets get destroyed. That's why every planet that these Anunnaki beings or these strange entities that they communicate with has been destroyed because when you mess with the polarities and you dominate the feminine you destroy the planet the earth sigil is the venus symbol upside down it's the symbol of the feminine upside down and one of the greatest mysteries is that the feminine is an embodiment of of matter of the planet matter mutter and you can't if you destroy the feminine you will destroy the planet for sure. We have to be in harmony with one another. So this idea that humanity has been hybridized from um, into creation with, by aliens, that's not a creation myth. That is the degradation of humanity. It is the removal of the feminine from creation. And when you accept that mythology, when you accept that myth, you remove her too. You remove her within yourself and you feed into it in the world. We have to understand what we're, what we're doing by taking on these beliefs and participating in this propaganda.
So this is a culture. This regressive Mars force is a culture. It is the culture of genetic modification and the Gattaca society. It is the removal of women from creation entirely eventually. And this is why in so much sci-fi, you'll see this weird theme of women needed for procreation again on Mars. Mars needs moms or Mars needs women. And even in, you know, various Walt Disney cartoons. Through the years, there have been frequent rumors that Martians disguised as Earthmen walk amongst us. These stories are perhaps strengthened by the thousands of reports of unidentified flying objects passing in an endless procession across our skies. Today, a space-conscious public avidly consumes tons of story material about life on other planets. A typical cosmic soap opera usually begins at a very ultra-secret government space project. The hero is a young electronics genius who is always busy formulating new laws of thermodynamics and astrophysics. The heroine is his secretary, efficient, hardworking, and rather attractive. Of course, the villain is a mechanical robot from Mars. He is usually controlled by a Martian mastermind whose appearance is too horrible to reveal at this time. The escape device is a late model electrophlegmatic flying saucer. The story plot usually concerns the lack of some precious element on Mars, such as water or uranium or women. Colonel, the message is, Mars needs women. These were the words that startled the world. This was the reason for an invasion that shocked the Earth. Martians, beings from outer space, with one prime objective, women, Earth women, to help repopulate their dying planet, to bring new blood to an ancient civilization. <coughs> Beauty and the beasts, only the beasts were men, Martian men, every woman checked and double checked, only the most perfect, the most beautiful. Is Earth to be ravished because Mars needs women? That's because this truth and this reality exists deep in our subconscious mind and deep in our spiritual memory and we are being called today to understand it. Because as we move out of this period of, the in, of intense individuality and we rise into the next planetary expression, we will, we will need the, it, it will be based more on the feminine. And we will need this wisdom and we will need that force to project us forward. So destroying it is to destroy ourselves. And of course, if you get rid of the feminine impulse, that also means that you're getting rid of emotionality. You're getting rid of the of, of compassion. You're getting rid of um, an, the, the natural force within all of us that reminds us that we're interconnected. You're getting rid of nurturing. You're getting rid of a massive spiritual connection to the cosmos because it is Mary or it's Sophia that connects with the father or the solar logo, so the Godhead directly, right? She is the go-between. And so when you remove that, it doesn't go very well. And so we need that to stay active. We need that to stay healthy. And in order to do that, we need to understand very clearly what the occult meaning of Mars is and how it's going on in our world and how it does seek to destroy the feminine. And again, you know, just like transhumanism, they're going to make transhumanism seem extremely attractive to people. The same thing with getting rid of feminine, the feminine and women. They're going to make that seem empowering to women. It's already happening. And so as women, we need to also not accept this and turn inward and develop our sacred femininity 
and not have that be manipulated away from us by accepting these bizarre cosmologies about genetic manipulation and artificial wounds and allowing this futuristic Martian impulse to destroy everything in sight. Okay. And of course, you know, this leads to um, an evolutionary dead end. So there is nothing productive about this. This is, this is an energy and a force that's out of control. You know, there is no evolution once this impulse gets to the point where it is today. It is pure devolution. It is pure regression for humanity. So there really is no benefit for humanity to support this. All of our benefit is in coming together and confronting this today. The other thing that's really fascinating is that we all know this. You know this. And many science fiction writers have known this. Many people who make movies about Mars and about just science fiction space stuff know this because it is the most popular theme in science fiction is this Martian impulse, especially with films and books about Mars. It's the same themes over and over again. So, so we, this is something that we know that's within inside all of us. It's not something that's beyond us. It's something that is deeply, deeply, deeply within us that we have a choice to manifest again um, and go down this dark road or not. And this is why I've created Mars Mysteries is so that we can look very deeply into this regressive impulse and very consciously reject it and bring that masculine impulse back in line, bring the feminine impulse back in line and actually know what we're doing. So it's really interesting how a lot of the movies and books about Mars actually feature the removal of women from society, um, there's several things about that. Um, they all usually feature transhumanism, or at the very least, they feature robots, often chimeras as well, because part of the Martian impulse, again, is genetic modification and genetic splicing. So it's like they take the human genome and they'll splice it with animals, plants, you know, whatever they can. And eventually they, they even merge with the mineral kingdom, which is transhumanism. And so you really can clearly see that a lot of these creations about Mars by these brilliant science fiction writers and films and things like this, they're clearly portraying, they're clearly a psychic vision that is portrayed as fiction, which is, happens a lot. It happens a lot that these writers are incredibly psychic and they're 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 actually sharing a prophecy with us and so let's use that let's look at that as as that's being what it is another another common theme is surviving on a dead planet so obviously when that martian impulse becomes so dominating and so uh present in in society it it leads to death it also leads to the worship of death as well it's a death cult and so what ends up happening is when you see a society that has been taken by that Mars impulse, you see you, it's usually portrayed with somebody on Mars trying to get it, bring it to life again. You know, of course, through playing God and often the same ways that got them in that position at all. It's a, re it, it's a repeating loop. Um, and so you also see lots of science fiction movies that really take on that regressive Mars impulse as people are trying to travel, you know, millions of light years uh, in a dead civil, in a dead cosmos. You know, the idea that we're surrounded by planets and we're surrounded by stars, but there doesn't seem to be any parallel life to ourselves. It's always a little bit off. It's usually a little bit different. Not always in science fiction, but usually it is, especially in modern science fiction. And that's because that's portraying that when you become imbalanced within the Mars impulse like that, it is not a creative position to be in. So you can't actually enter into other stars or planetary systems that have life because you are in a death impulse. 
because you are imbalanced. And so that is all you perceive within the world. And also the, the Martian impulse also really only pays attention to the 3D landscape of the cosmos and thinks that everything begins here. Everything begins in the material plane. And there isn't a whole lot of understanding, especially with cosmic spirituality, that it, the cosmos doesn't work according to the material laws that we think that they do. It's actually a much, it actually adheres to more spiritual laws, um, which is why they have such a problem with various different things that these groups try to do. Um, and so we are deep, 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 deep in a regressive Mars impulse. Um, we need to look very closely at this um, and we need to understand because we are right in the center of it. And it's time for us to begin making um, a, a different path. Perhaps we can't get rid of, you know, this impulse in the world. People have free will to connect with and, and align with whatever impulses they want within themselves. And I think that we're also at a point where people can't help but be possessed by this. They literally don't see the world in a healthy way anymore. They can't. Um, and so it is not necessarily, you know, a way of healing everyone or convincing everyone, but it's definitely self-responsibility and understanding that a parallel impulse can be created besides this impulse that allows us to function in a lot better way and at least not be dominated by it. Okay. So that's really the goal of this series and of this conversation. I really want to nail home here is this idea of limited perception. So when somebody is possessed or streaming into themselves this lower Mars impulse, this regressive Martian impulse, their perception is not like somebody who is channeling within themselves that transcended Mars impulse. You know, they may look the same physically, they, they, we look, we're all human here, but inside, if you were to see the energy body and you were to see the impulses that they were streaming, it would, it would look like a very different individual to somebody who is streaming the higher impulse of Mars. Okay. So we all look the same here, but what's happening in regards to our level of cosmic initiation, the kinds of planetary energies that we're, there's, we're streaming into us, their condition is very different. And that's very important to know. And so when you get caught up in this lower Martian impulse, it's individuals are not functioning within their minds and within their perception in the same way. This is something that we really have to understand, especially if you're a spiritual person, if you're a sensitive person, you know, it's, you have to understand that these people are not seeing the world that the way that you're seeing the world. Okay, they're not seeing it in a collaborative way, in a creative way. They're seeing it in the way of a regressive Mars ideology, which is might is right, which is an obsession with the material plane. It's a completely different ideology. And this is something that takes a lot of maturity to understand because there's this impulse within us, within people, um, I, I think that makes us all want to be the same, makes us all want to be on the same level, the same playing field, because it's easy. It's easy, and if we if, if we make everyone the same, then we don't have to go inwards and understand the nuances, the dark and light within ourselves. By, by, by making things too egalitarian in our minds and society, we're actually hiding from ourselves. And so we have to understand that we are spiritual beings. There's more spiritual energy existing with uh, connected to ourselves you know, then there is materialized energy. We're completely and totally spiritual beings. And because of that, we have a total, totally unique story, a totally unique incarnational story, a totally unique history as our soul has incarnated in various different spheres in the solar system, in the solar system school. And so we have to understand that everybody is different and everybody is unique. We are all, we are all connected. We are all catalyzed by Christ consciousness. We're, we're all 
have that similarity within us. We all have the same potentials, but we're not all at the same level of evolution. We need to understand this going forward. And it doesn't mean that we are cruel to people. It doesn't mean that we are judgmental or anything like that, but we have to be real and we have to acknowledge that there is diversity in um, perception. And when you are, when you, when you are channeling that regressive Mars impulse, and that is your Mars energy, that is that planetary sphere for that individual, um, what ends up happening is they can't actually see the higher planes or perceive them properly. All they can perceive is the eighth sphere. And this is very important. So when you're possessed by that lower Mars impulse, all that individual can see is the eighth sphere or the lower astral plane. And they will think that that eight sphere or lower astral plane, which has different little divisions in it, different layers in it according to time, um, they'll think that that whole thing is the cosmos. And so it's a complete illusion, it's a complete delusion. They'll practice black magic. You know, black magic is rooted in ego, in, in selfishness, in might is right, they'll practice that. Um, they'll see things that have to do with um, more lighter magic or, or humane things as being weak. You know, um, they'll work with demonic entities. They'll, they'll, um, they'll interpret higher truths in a profane way or an inverted way. So the moment that they do try to... Um, work with something that takes a lot of attunement and a lot of balance for the individual to actually understand and receive, they'll try to enter that plane of consciousness or, re or receive a piece of information or do something psychically. And it'll come back to them as a complete inversion because they're not advanced enough to access that plane. And when you try to access a plane that you're not initiated into or you're not balanced enough to actually access, or part of the Akashic Records, you're not actually initiated or balanced enough to access, you're not advanced enough to access in your abilities, then you will receive an inversion of truth. You'll receive it in a warped and distorted way. In order to be a good psychic and do high magic or do, you know, actually manifest things and actually go into these spiritual conditions and pull out information, you have to be very, very, very balanced and very, very, very aligned. Everybody is psychic. Everybody can go into the higher planes, but not everybody can access certain things in certain places. You have to be very balanced in your essence. So you can try to, but you're going to come back and you're going to get a complete inversion of reality. You're going to get things all mixed up and conflated because there isn't enough of your being that is initiated into that consciousness to receive it fully. And so you get some weird mixed up thing. And then that's how you become trapped in the lower planes and you get this weird inversion of the cosmos. You get this inversion of God and people worshiping it and you get inverted symbols and you get weird stuff, right? Because it's that need for power, that, that, that desire to access these planes without first developing yourself first the desire to have leadership positions or influential positions when the individual is not trained enough for that. They're not ready for that, but yet they seek those positions anyway for their own personal gain and power. It is a complete, that ends up leading into all of what I'm talking about. So that interpretation of higher truth that in a profaned way or in a backwards way is a huge reason why all of the occult symbols are inverted when it comes to black magic, why there is the obsession with certain things and whatever, it's literally just not being able to fully interact with these concepts. And over time, um, they turn into their own religion. So you have these warped ideologies or, um, that just turn into their own religions. That's the Mars impulse. Um, and so, but it can be, it, it could work obviously if it was a feminine society too, that wasn't being clarified and having the mental development that the male brings too. It can happen in a feminine society too. It's just that that was the prior cycle of humanity. It's not the cycle that we're in now. Okay. So ultimately when you are in this 
backwards Martian energy stream when that's your Martian energy. Um, that's your connection to Mars. You work within a completely fallen plane of consciousness. You work with fallen beings and fallen entities. When you go into psychic, when you try to get in, the information for inspiration or, or for spiritual purposes, you get the lowest possible timeline there is, which is why, you know, it's all about hybridization and genetic modification that humanity was created through hybridization and genetic modification. And they have to evolve through hybridization, hybridization and genetic modification. You know, this is all part of that backwards fallen consciousness and impulse and the backwards or regressive timeline of humanity. This, this all has to do with that. Let's summarize what we have covered today. Every human being is a living snapshot of the solar system. Each planet can be in a different condition depending on the individual's level of spiritual progression in our solar system school. Each planet also relates or sends impulses to the Earth. These impulses can be positive or negative depending on the evolutionary cycle of each planetary sphere. Mars has been in a regressive condition in relation to the Earth. And although many souls are able to transcend the Mars impulse, some are not. This inverted Mars impulse affects human consciousness in such a way that it drives the individual into a materialist perception. And this materialist perception ultimately leads to a completely inverted and regressive view of reality. This has created a regressive, materialist culture on the earth that cannot perceive nor understand higher worlds, and they do not understand the very soul essence within themselves. If an individual is to stay locked in that impulse, that regressive Martian impulse, they will seek to compensate by becoming hyper-futuristic. We can see this impulse in science fiction around Mars, where Mars seems to always become an unnatural world of transhumanism, death, chaos, and deformation. The draw towards using technology for occult rites and seeing AI as a god is also an inevitability for those trapped in this impulse. You see, if they cannot fully perceive spiritual laws and forces, then they will attempt to relate to them in the only way they can, through material forms. You see, even though someone has cut themselves off from their spirit and from the spiritual planes, they still seek to engage with them. They still seek to interact with them. But instead of going inward and developing themselves in order to do so organically, Instead, they create strange material forms as an inversion and mockery of genuine spiritual growth and discovery. Thank you everyone for joining me today. In our next episode, we are going to explore an example of a spiritual group that could be embodying the regressive Mars impulse. Until then, if you enjoy my work, please consider supporting me by making a donation or becoming a premium member on my website. That helps me keep the lights on over here. And don't forget, I'm completely supported by you.